This meeting is being recorded per Governor Lamont's Sec Executive Order 7B. Vatsa, did you uh, text that or email it? Oh, you do need it. I oh, thought, yes. I thought oh, you sorry. were just going to go with the more recent, the one you had. Sorry, I gave up uh, when I thought it was coming. All right. It's, it will, actually, why don't I do the easy thing? Why don't I just read it? Uh, that sounds best to me. Thank yeah. you. Good evening. Welcome to tonight's meeting of the Wethersfield Historic District Commission. For those who have not been here tonight, tonight's session is composed of two parts, the public hearing and the public meeting. In the public hearing, we'll ask each applicant in turn to come forward and explain the application in detail. This will give us the opportunity to clarify what you're proposing to do and for you to ask us any questions. Also, commissioners may voice an opinion or suggestion based on their own feelings. However, a vote is not taken until the public meeting following the public hearing. In the public meeting, which is not open to public comment, we will deliberate your application and decide how to act on it. We may approve it, approve it with stipulations, table it for further considerations, or in rare cases, we may deny it. You are welcome to stay for the public meeting, but need not do so. The results of tonight's meeting will be available from the Westfield Building Office tomorrow at 860-721-2839 anytime after nine in the morning. Please be advised that the Historic District Commission approval does not preclude the need for any other required permits, such as zoning, inland wetlands, or building. Please contact the building department to review any other permits that may be required before beginning construction. With this, I will ask our clerk, Commissioner Lyons, to read the legal notice. Thank you. Legal Notice, Town of Wethersfield Historic District Commission. The Wethersfield Historic District Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, June 8, 2021 at 7.30 p.m. on the following applications seeking a certificate of appropriateness. Application 6049-21, Paul Lasella, seeking to install 12 by 12 cedar pavilion with metal roof on rear patio, install wood trim and gutters on barn at 32 Hartford Ave. Application 6050-21, Mark and Mary Raymond, seeking to replace two wood garage doors with Regal N24 flat panel steel doors with windows to match existing at 111 State Street. Application 6051-21, Turner Home Improvement, seeking to replace window and patio door with a Vanguard fiberglass window and door to match in color and style at 79 Sharon Lane. Application 6052-21, Timothy J. Harding, seeking to replace windows with Marvin Elevate windows in ebony color, remove two windows on left side of home, remove rear side door, replace side coffin door to match front door, install wood fence in rear yard, replace concrete front steps with stone slab, install window on rear addition at 496 Main Street. Application 6053-21, Aaron and Nathan Walpole, seeking to replace 24 existing vinyl windows with Marvin Infinity double hung windows at 11 Middletown Avenue. Application 6054-21, Amanda Camasso, seeking to replace six foot wood stockade fence with pressure treated six foot stockade fence at six railroad place. If you wish to review the applications on file, you may respect, request a copy by contacting HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or by calling 860-721-2836. Live participation is available by audio format. Any residents interested in speaking on an application or wishing to listen to the meeting should email HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or call 860-721-2836 by 6 p.m. and the night of the meeting to be sent phone number for audio access. Please include your name, phone number, and address in the email. Town of Wethersfield Historic District Commission, Kim Wolf, duly authorized it at Wethersfield, Connecticut, this 24th day of May, 2021. 
Thank you very much, uh, both commissioners, uh, for your excellent reading. I'm sorry I'm off camera, but I'm working off of an iPhone. Uh, and in order to be able to see my screen, um, it would be too awkward to try to maintain uh, the camera. So uh, let's start with application number 6034-21, Cynthia Brown. I understand that we have a new proposal this evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Lance Lafrenier with Northeast Overhead Door, uh, representing Cynthia Brown by her request. That's great. So can you, uh, uh, do you have any images yourself or are we relying on what was submitted uh, to the coordinator? Um, I believe that um, we had just submitted uh, a, a new image uh, this week uh, to Kim Wolf um, at the request of Mrs. Brown. Okay, that's great. Kim, can you reference the page for us? So it looks basically like- It's on the screen. Can you not see it? Yep. Oh, let me take You're a good, look. Kim. Oh, great, thank you. So it looks like basically you've addressed the issues that were brought up here as a point of concern with the windows, the shape of the windows matching the shape of the overhang on the garage door. Um, I guess the, the first design was different where it was, yep. um, both windows were arched in the center as well. Yeah. So we it tried just, to just- it just work. It was a little awkward with the- Sure. With what was compared to what was there. Okay. So um, my question would be about the door itself. I know that uh, a number of different designs were shared with the coordinator um, that um, provide uh, a look that's a little bit different than the one here, which seems like a pretty visible insert window rather than one where the uh, uh, light uh, divisions kind of are at the same elevation as the rest of the door. Um, is this door that you're proposing expected to look like this with kind of a insert window on it? Uh, or is this just a bad drawing? Yeah, the, the drawing is pretty poor. Um, so uh, it, it's a standard stamp panel door. Um, you know, uh, basically two different door designs, a, a stamp panel versus an overlay. Um, both of which are, are in several of the neighborhoods. Um, this is just a, a stamp panel rather than an overlay. But uh, the drawing is kind of a, a poor drawing. So Doug? Yes. Assuming that the door is just like uh, Ms. Brown's neighbor, which is also a stamp panel steel door, is uh, if you had a chance to look at that door, the window insert is flush with the rest of the door. The only downside that there is, is that there is a rectangular outline around the whole window unit. But the primary, the primary visibility is, is that it's all flush with the door. It does not stand proud of it. And no, it does not, correct. Okay. Well, that's... That that's certainly promising. Uh, has the contractor seen the door next door to Ms. Brown's home to be able uh, to? Yes, I have. Um, the one I believe to the right of her home is an yes. overlay door, if you will, um, meaning uh, there's a composite material affixed to the outside of the door. Actually, the, the door that I was referring to is the one not to the right of her house, but on the sort of right across the street from her. Okay. Which is a, a white stamp metal door. Yeah, correct. The, I, saw, uh, I saw the overlay door, that looked gorgeous. It, they, they are very beautiful. So Voxic, are you saying that the door uh, to, on the house 
to the right as you face uh, the Brown home, that this would be the same door, no. even though the drawing looks different? No. The house to the right, if you face Ms. Brown's garage door. Yes. Oh. Okay. I, I'm talking about the house that, as you face the front of the Brown nope. house. Like, like the contractor said, that's an overlay door, which is very different. But that's the look that I think uh, has, uh, was provided with at least maybe four different samples to the um, coordinator showing their uh, successful deployment in the district. And so I was just curious if the um, contractor had had a chance to see a, any of those besides the uh, one next door. So the one next, what I'm referring to as next door, that's an overlay door, which is not the, was been presented to us tonight. Correct. You know, okay. there's a, a stamp panel, um, as Vasek said, if it's across the street kind of diagonal to the right, if you will, if you are standing at the end of Miss Brown's driveway. I see. I don't have an image of that handy, but I would say that based on the number of, I guess what are called overlay style doors that I've seen, the difference is uh, attractive enough that it would seem to be uh, a, a more accurate replication of a, um, of a door with a window on it. Um, and so I guess I'm wondering, do you provide both, uh, do you install both kinds of doors? Uh, we do, absolutely. Okay. Uh, that's great to hear. Um, um, two meetings prior to the first meeting that uh, the Brown application was heard, um, I had another customer um, and their door was a stamp panel with glass and that was approved. So I guess as far as that goes, I'm, I'm a little confused. Um, sure. We addressed the issue as far as having a double arch in the glass with a single arch above the door? I will tell you that I was the deciding vote in that uh, circumstance. And that um, was a circumstance where my understanding of what the drawing was showing uh, was, um, I, I was incorrect. I thought that uh, the representation was that although the drawing looked like this, the execution would look like the overlay. Uh, so that's why uh, I'm especially hesitant uh, and have been asking further uh, about this during the past two meetings uh, because when it was brought to my attention that the drawing that I saw would not uh, render in fact like these other examples, I provided uh, multiple photographs to the coordinator of these other examples. Uh, and now I guess what I'm learning is that the difference between the insert and the overlay is that the uh, overlay is the examples that I brought photographs for. Um, I did not share any photographs of insert windows. Uh, so if there's a dis distinction, I would say that um, as a living, breathing commission, we uh, tend to learn from decisions that we've made as time goes on. Uh, and uh, we try to um, improve upon decisions where that can be done. And this may be one of those. And so that may be the reason for the distinction. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Uh, and I will defer to any other commissioners uh, thoughts or uh, at this time. I just have a question for uh, director contractor. What makes us kind of busy these these windows and, and I was in favor of even some of the other designs, but you know, it was the horizontal button and the window that shortens the, makes them look very uh, crowded uh, there. Now you have an example in some of the stuff you presented in the first two meetings where you just have the vertical mullion sure. and not, not the cross T. 
You know what I mean? Yep, that, that's just a, a different uh, window uh, design. Is but would you say that the one on it's our page fifteen of the packet? Is that the same insert there? It's a different um, color. It's a stain. Uh, looks like it. That could even be a. Without I I abs, I don't, don't have, it. have it in front of me. Kim could put it up. Uh, Kim, do you see that page fifteen of the of our packet? Yep. I'll bring it that's up. An, that's an overlay door. That's an overlay. Okay. Are you sure, Vasek? It looks exactly you can see like some of it. Yeah, the glass, one. some of it looks, yeah. Maybe. This looks like an insert to me. Uh, and I think that the suggestion being made by uh, Mr. Lyons is helpful to that insert uh, because without the crossbar, the horizontal bar, um, at least there's less of a reminder that it's an insert. Keep going up. Can you see it? Keep going, yeah. So the brick, uh, this it's one? the putty, oh, yes. Keep going. That one. Keep going. Keep going, yeah. I, I thought that was it. No, 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 that's a square. Th this one is, is has the same kind of eyebrow. Oh, I see. And there so, it is. So, Keep, yeah. <laughs> so, so it doesn't look as busy without that horizontal piece. That's the same, same insert, isn't it? Well, that would be an overlay window, but it does show the less busy uh, light pattern. That that's the exact same door with just a different insert um, and obviously a different color. Yeah. Can that insert be done? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, that gives you that eyebrow, that arch to match the opening, and but it loses that horizontal bar. It's less busy. Thank you. Sure. Busy. Can you hear me now, ladies and gentlemen? We can. Thank you. I've struggled to get on, and I'm sorry I'm so delayed. Lance, thank you. Um, the door that is now on the screen, would you accept that one? We will make a decision tonight. Is that Look, acceptable I've to come you, here Cindy? Three is that acceptable? different times. Okay. Yes, the question Chris, is, what are you going to say? Is that acceptable to you? Yes, I just okay. want a new door. I'm 89 years old, <laughs> and you're going to give me a nervous breakdown. All I want is a door that I feel would be extraordinarily attractive on my Donny Bosworth cape, which I moved into in 1961. I think a new door that I should have. Um, and I also think that overhead garage doors are a good product. They are highly thought of and really respected. So I don't really know why you are questioning it. I just have one last question for the contractor, which is, um, have you compared the window exposure on the door you're proposing to the uh, valance that is hanging over that door uh, to uh, ensure that there's enough clearance for it there so but that it isn't completely hidden by the valance, for instance? Co correct, it, it will not interrupt uh, the window, which is, why she um, she preferred the arch design to match Great. the uh, you know the line created by that arch. Excellent. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Uh, if there aren't any more questions from commissioners, uh, and there aren't any uh, more uh, comments from the homeowner or the applicant. I will at this point ask if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application. Hearing none, we'll move to the next application and thank those who joined us just now, uh, both Ms. Brown and her contractor. Have a nice evening, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, moving to the next uh, application, if I could have just one second. I believe we are at
We're at 604621, which is Thank you, Center Street. Is the uh, homeowner or a contractor here for that? I, I believe Wendy's going to be representing them. Uh, Wendy. Uh, <laughs> Kim. Okay, Kim. Uh, application number 6046 21, the project at 54 Center Street. Yes, it's me. Um, I spoke with the homeowner. Hold on, let me mute for one second. I spoke with a homeowner a couple times over the last two days and he wishes to change the product to all wood. And if I can share my screen. Sorry, one second. Hopefully you can see this. I can make it a little bigger. This is the design he would like to go with. Um, it will be all wood. He will paint it gray and nothing fancy. He doesn't want anything fancy at all. He just wants, he will get stairs to code and a railing to code in all wood to be painted. So Kimmy's not going to do the, his deck, the porch part with the treks, uh, none of that? None of that. He's switching the stairs. back to all wood. So he's essentially removing the stairs that he has that are wood currently. And when he replaces them, they will be to, co to today's code. And so there are two, two railings. I'm sorry, Jackson. Two railings. Yeah, two railings before. In wood. Yep. With a very simple style, with a four by four square post and a two by four type of beveled ha handrail. And um, Kim, it's not showing it on the sides, but I'm assuming that there are balusters there. No, he does not want balusters. And does he think that he'll be able to, um, that this will meet the today's code, that it would just have a single uh, post and uh, handrail? As far as we know, if something changes and the inspectors tell him that he has to have some more support, he will come back for an amendment. And okay. Doug, if you count the risers, there's four risers. If each riser is seven inches, that's 28 inches, and that's less than 30. So he's inches. below 30. Okay. Yep. Very good. Thank you very much, Kim. It's Thank great you. to hear that there's been a modification. Uh, given the level of discomfort that there seemed to be with the previous proposal. So at this point, I'll ask if there are any more questions of commissioners. And uh, if they're not, I'll ask if there's anyone from the public wishing to speak for or against this application. And hearing none, we'll move to application number 6049-21, Paula Stella, the project at 32 Hartford Avenue. Welcome, uh, Paul, uh, or anything. any contractor here tonight. Yep, just me. Uh, so is there anything that you want to show or tell us, uh, or should we just reference ourselves to the packet that was provided? No, uh, there were uh, three things on the application, the first being an all wood pavilion, freestanding installed on our pool patio. The second is a K style gutter on the barn, most likely uh, in black it, where the barn is being prepped for painting. And we'll uh, decide on a final color when we get to that point. And then I also want to uh, install a um, five quarter by seven inch wood trim above each garage door, carrying all the way to the left trim of the front of the barn and the right trim as well. Looking back at old pictures, the barn had sliding barn doors. And while we're not doing anything with the garage doors right now, uh, we look to mimic uh, and potentially put sliding uh, doors on at some future date. So uh, let's start with the pavilion. How visible will the pavilion be from the street or the public way, I should say? Uh, very visible. 
behind the house though? I have noticed uh, these seem to be appearing um, and I, I'm not really sure that there is such a thing as a uh, kind of native uh, pavilion to Weathersfield, but this one uh, is uh, not necessarily, um, you know, it seems like a more uh, kind of contemporary design, uh, which is not a bad thing, uh, but I don't know that it has much of a predicate in the district. So I didn't know what the commissioners, other commissioners that are here are, are thinking of these, um, this design. Um, it seems to me to be uh, reminiscent of a lot of what you see in uh, kit garages and uh, accessory buildings that are very popular nowadays across the whole country. And that's why they don't really kind of um, render New England feeling to me or Connecticut feeling to me as much as as maybe a less defined place, uh, maybe in the great South or West. So does anybody else have any thoughts about them? Because uh, more and more of them will be coming to us uh, as they uh, are embraced. So Doug, keep in mind that this is, you know, New England. When you say New England, we're dealing with Victorian house here though. Uh, a barn of, you know, that's also probably of the same vintage or a little bit newer. So, I, you know, when, when somebody talks to me about New England style, that tends to evoke either Cape Cod or a uh, roughly Revolutionary War style house. Uh, when you get into Victorians, I mean, that's high style. You can have all kinds of wild stuff. True. Um, these kind and of basic, just a, a note, uh, I believe the barn, uh, according to the old, uh, the, the barn book, yeah. I believe by Eleanor Buckler Wolf, they had uh -huh. stated there that uh, the barn was built prior to the house, which was the house was built in 1892. Okay, so a few years predating the house. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, I, to me, these just read a little chunkier. Um, and, and really not as connected with any particular design that we already have in the district. And, and maybe that's part of their attraction is their, you know, a pavilion of their time. Uh, to me, this looks like a very popular look for 2020 uh, and, and this decade. And maybe that's the perfect thing to put between uh, a Victorian house and barn, uh, but, you know, like I said, I think that they um, ship and, and, and go together uh, readily and, and they are sturdy enough so they don't blow away. And so there's some real attractive uh, features about them. But like I said, I, you know, they I don't know that they relate to many buildings that we currently see in the district. And, uh, you know, they don't have uh, in some installations, uh, you know, a very powerful impact. So um, to a certain extent, I think they can coexist. But again, I, uh, well, this is one of the first ones that I've seen has come to us uh, for a true approval. And I commend the homeowner for that. Uh, but I just wanted to bring that up. Hey, Doug, keep in mind how well it goes with those uh, traditional New England in-ground pools, too. <laughs> well, they Below ground, below ground, uh, yeah. below grade level. Yeah. So, and and to me, that Doug, it's good points and, and Vasic as well. To but I'd rather see this than an eight-sided gazebo style deal with kind of hokey uh, scrolling and, and Victorian kind of trim work underneath. So this to me is it's uh, it's an intrusive. Yeah, you can definitely see it. I know there's a pool there probably, uh, which is fine. And uh, yeah, I like it. It, it. it blends in well in, in my estimation. Very good. Like I said, it's it's definitely a contemporary design in terms of uh, uh, its execution. Uh, but I, I agree with you, um, Chris. It has its uh, merits, uh, and and I'm not necessarily looking for uh, the old style gazebo either. It's it's a hard thing to decide. Although I do think it's possible that this could be rendered 
in a slightly more uh, softer. No, not necessarily. I just I think it could uh, you could have pretty much the same look without it looking like it's out of Waco, which is I think very much the the trend in uh, a lot of design right now because it's so popular. Uh, and, and I think that could be anywhere um, or Colorado or, or any of these other places where you would just as be apt to see this. Um, and there are others uh, that could be simplified. I mean, you, could, you could take this and maybe paint those posts white, you know, that kind of thing. There's, uh, you know, a, a number of different things that could could make it uh, look a little bit more local. Uh, but again, that was mostly a philosophical discussion uh, that I think we should be aware of as we go along. Thank you, folks. Is there any, uh, are there any other questions of any other commissioner for uh, the proposal regarding this piece of it? Yeah, Doug, I'll, I'll just I'll just add Doug my thoughts here for a minute. I sure. I, I rather agree with you um, with the beautiful Queen Anne in the round room that that's a bit the uh, it's a bit square and a big a bit stout to be um, seated next to that beautiful um, round round room and, and building Queen mm -hmm. Anne. So um, I, I agree with you on that. I I also agree that it is next to a modern um, in ground pool that will be is will be useful and enjoyed. So um, we are heading, you know, the 21st century is here. Um, I, I didn't see a picture of the siding or the, what you wanted to do on top of the barn, the trim. I didn't know if there was a picture on that, the, where the wood trim was going to be installed. There is not, it's a five quarter, which is an inch and a quarter thick. Uh -huh. And it will be about a five and a half inch uh, width and span the entire uh, distance of the barn, uh, affixed on each of the windows to the left and to the right of the barn as well, uh, the doors as well as the garage door, over the garage doors. So, yeah, yeah just, okay. Kim, is there any chance you can bring up a Google Maps picture of the house? Maybe not. So, Paul, you, you want to. I think she's them. muted too. Tim is muted. Oh, there she is. I'm having some sound problems. I'm sorry. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. No. Nope. So, did you hear my request? No. Can you say it again? Yes. Is it possible for you to bring up the Google Maps picture of uh, Mr. LaSalle's house at 32 Hartford Ave? Yeah. Yep, Hartford. I have it. One second. And if you zoom in on the barn off of the right hand side of the house, I think Kathy will be able to see what's being proposed. And Paul, the, the trim you're proposing is going to go on top of the existing trim? or instead of? Uh, on top of the existing. Okay. Okay. That, and I'll spin it around and zoom in. Lovely. Is that close enough? Do you need a different angle? No, that's, that's perfect. perfect. Okay. Does that give you an idea, Kathy? Yeah, so not on the sides, just on top. Yep, on the front. Uh huh. Just go, just stick a whiteboard across from edge to edge. Okay. All right. I assume white at least. Maybe not. It's up to uh, him. It's, to it's got to be wood. Uh, <laughs> and the barn's being repainted. Okay. All right. Just, just no purpose. Just decorative. Uh, we we. We have talked and have been looking into a sliding barn doors, which were originally on the house. Okay. Um, okay. What is here now, and, and either whether we do a sliding barn door or we do a garage door that mimics 
like a carriage house type door. Mm -hmm. uh, what is here now was here when we bought the house, which was not there originally. Okay. Um, so that uh, that kind of trim that frames each window and each garage door okay. um, was not original. If you look back at the original pictures of the barn, you see a piece of trim that goes all the way to the left and all the way to the right. And it's uh, thicker than a traditional three and a half inch trim. All right, I see. So how how wide is the is this uh, panel that's supposed to span the full width of the barn? Uh, it is about five and a half inches. And it's going to be continuous because of the desire to try to um, um, maybe uh, adjust the doors? A at a later date, yep. The only reason why I ask is that without uh, it's and it's kind of hard to tell with this picture because there are no doors there. Um, but it, so this board will connect uh, all these pieces that are currently just floating the the window and the two doors. Yes. And, um, um, uh, and even if the doors were shut, you guys would not be impressed. They're just standard <laughs> metal, no window. They're, they're, they're quite generic. Sure. So I would just ask, does any, do any commissioners have a concern over kind of creating this band across the middle? I mean, it's not, as I can think of it, a, a typical um, um, a, a typical feature, um, uh, certainly having trim ar around a door uh, is, and uh, I can see the reason for wanting to have the consistency all the way across, but is it going to be painted a contrasting color uh, or um, I'm just kind of wondering, um, right now the absence of it doesn't seem uh, uh, too bad, uh, the addition of it, um, I'm, I'm not sure if it might create a belt look uh, if it's a contrasting color, uh, but it's just something to consider. In any event, it's pretty far back and has, I think, a relatively minimal impact on the district. So I'd be inclined to want to embrace the homeowner's request, uh, but I'm not sure exactly how uh, it will end up looking uh, without the purpose of the eventual use that's um, um, uh, foreseen here. Any other uh, questions or comments by commissioners? And, and Doug, maybe I'll just make one other point. Um, sure. Looking at some old Polaroids, uh, there is uh, a, a trim board that does span from left to right on the entire barn. And I could- maybe, Okay. Um, and uh, uh, unfortunately, in, in these pictures, there's no garage windows. Uh, those sure. had also been put in. Uh, but the, the original uh, design of the, dar uh, the barn did have- Have um, that band? Have that band uh, okay. from side to side. That's really helpful to know. Like I said, I don't uh, ne need to see the photograph if that representation is made. And I'm assuming that if it worked at one point, they pulled it off for a reason. Uh, and if you're looking to reintroduce it because you think there's a function that works as well as um, some aesthetic reason, uh, then we can embrace that. Thank you. Uh, and then and the last element, the gutters, my preference is not to have gutters, but unfortunately I'm replacing the wood every seven to, to nine years uh, where the water falls up the building on both the back and the front, uh, even with, with it being painted. Yeah. So this is as much about a uh, utility as anything else to put the gutters up. I would have to agree with the um, uh, necessity of that. So um, we uh, do, uh, does anyone uh, have a concern over it being case style? You know, the case style hold more, I think typically, uh, and they kind of get lost since they're so ubiquitous. Uh, Vatsik or uh, Chris, any um, request for a half round? At, at that distance, I don't think it's gonna make an impact one way or the other. I agree. All right. Um, the, uh, 
Um, half, rounds I, only, half rounds are easier to paint. <laughs> well, I will just say that, um, you know, there, I have half rounds on my barn um, uh, and Kate's style on the house. So I'm a fan of both. Um, and I don't know if given the age of the uh, barn, uh, if there's any um, uh, interest in um, kind of continuing that aged look, although you're going to be doing some updates with your doors anyway. Um, but uh, that may, might be something worth considering. And if for some reason you wanted to make a change, I think you could always come back to us with an amendment. And just for reference, uh, we, we ended up putting half round copper gutters on, on the house years ago. Um, unfortunately, from a performance standpoint, they don't, they don't seem to be, they don't seem to handle water as well as I would like, honestly. That's good to know. Um, I, uh, you know, as I said earlier, I think that typically the K style hold more volume and maybe there's less velocity um, and they don't run out of them. So not that I'm a scientist in any way and I could be wrong about that, but in any case, uh, is there anybody, uh, are there any other issues uh, regarding this application which require a discussion? Hearing none. I wanna thank the homeowner for coming in and explaining everything so well, that's appreciated. And ask uh, if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application. And hearing none, I will move, uh, thank Paul for coming in this evening and uh, move to application number 6050-21, Mark and Mary Raymond seeking to replace uh, garage doors at State Street. And uh, are we just referring to the uh, documentation or is there someone presenting tonight? I think you're referring to the documentation. Okay, great. So taking a look at that, um, I think we're dealing with, let me just go back again. Sorry about that. Uh, the garage doors uh, at 111 State Street. Uh, what page of the handout are we talking? Maybe number 438? 37, 38, 39. Yeah, I thought so. The door itself. Great. Uh, so looking at that door, uh, it does appear to be uh, a flat panel, what we commonly call a flat panel door, perhaps with an insert window. Um, Batsa, could you maybe uh, illuminate that for me? I mean, I'm just looking at the same documentation you're looking at, which is a steel door. Uh, whether the doors, whether the windows are inserts or not, I can't tell. Uh, but basically it's uh, pretty much like for like, flat panel for flat panel, the only, the major change seems, seems to be that it's a change of material. And the only aesthetic change is gonna be that the windows, because of the construction of the door are gonna be just based on the drawing, uh, a little bit less vertical, more horizontal than they are presently. It is an inset. Yeah, it does appear to be. And is this basically just a car length off the road or is this in a different it's, position? It's, oh no, it's way in the back. It's at the Thank back you. of the house. Thank you. I uh, see it again now. It, it was reminding me of um, another garage nearby there. Okay. All right. If you look at picture uh, 37, it gives you a pretty good idea. Yes, I see it there. and. Uh, you know, the, the horizontal nature of the uh, insert window being a bit smaller uh, wouldn't be my first choice, but the impact on the district is uh, pretty minimal given the distance. Uh, is there anyone else uh, from the commissioners that would like to uh, speak or comment about this while we're still in the public hearing? Hearing none, we'll move to the um, uh, public uh, 
is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application? Hearing none, we'll move to the next item on the agenda, which is application number 6051-21, Turner Home Improvement, the project at 79 Sharon Lane. Do we have a representative of Turner with us tonight or a homeowner? Yes, uh, this is Corey Turner from Turner Home Improvement Contractors. Um, representing Denise Gill, the homeowner uh, at 79 Sharon Lane. Thank you. Welcome uh, this evening, uh, Corey. Thanks for joining us. I believe we have some documentation in our packet. Correct. Um, and if I can share my screen, I have a little bit of additional information for you as well. Sure. It'll just take me one second. Hold on. No problem. It should work now. Thank you, Kim. Okay. Can everyone see it okay? It's developing so this me. Yeah, so this is townhouse condominiums here uh, along Spring Street. Uh, the unit is really this one right here, if you can see my cursor. Uh, the, both the, uh, the window and the door is within this patio area that is enclosed by a fence facing away from Spring Street, just to let you know. Uh, and... Thank you for letting us know. Uh, based on that, uh, I think that uh, is there a public way, Kim, where this is visible? Sharon Lane is a public, is, it does say private, but it is, it is, a, it is considered public. Uh, I see. Thank you. And is there a, a, a view through the, into that courtyard from these other built with these? No, there is not. <laughs> I don't very, think so. Uh, I mean, based on the overhead view, I, I, would imagine that um, unless there's a walkway, uh, it's hard to imagine that uh, oh, it's visible. Doug. Yeah. Uh, on Google Maps, if you look at if you plant yourself on Sharon Lane, look at the building. The top half of the uh, slider and the window are visible above the fence. I see. Okay, so, I will concede that point. I just uh, pinched the screen out and that provided a better view. So thank you. So I will concede the point that there's jurisdiction for us to discuss it further. Is there anything mm -hmm. anyone wants to say about the product? Well, I have a question for Mr. Turner. Uh, what was submitted yeah. were some lovely pictures of what the doors and windows look like from the inside. However, the, yeah, commission, and, the commission doesn't live there, so we want to see what it looks like from the outside. Can you help us yeah, with that? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, hold on one moment. Let me switch over to a different view here. Can you see this now? No, still have your uh, Google Maps thing. How about now? Nope. Let me stop sharing and then I'll reshare again. Okay. How's that? Much better. Yes. Come up. So this is the sliding window. Uh, that's going to be replaced uh, okay. once again, and it's within brick. Uh, the color is going to be royal brown, which is the closest match to it. No grids um, to match the existing size and the same dimensions. It's a 25, 50%, 25%. So we're going to be matching in kind. Um, this is the sliding glass door as well, uh, which is right next to it. Same thing. Yep. We're going to be matching in kind as close as possible. 
is the same color available for both the door and the window? Yes, it is. I see. That's correct. Great. And do you have images of what the product looks like? The, uh, I can bring this up, hold on. So royal brown, which is this color, is the color closest to, to what's existing on the, the complex. Uh, that will be the, the, the color that's being used. And, uh, but, as far as the product, yep. There we go. Did you, it's inside, inside, inside. You had one shot from the outside. And the next, you showed us one other screen. The, are you seeing the colors? No, no, no I want to see what the window looks like. And you're showing me a double hung window here. I, I was just trying to show you the color of that. Color. I'm, I'm okay. Cool. Before we move on from the color, uh, while we're right here, uh, yep. Corey, I don't know if it's just my phone, but um, that royal brown might not have been um, my first thought uh, as compared to the antique brown next to it or the earth tone. Uh, it looks like the royal brown has a little bit of red in it, but I might be wrong. Yeah, it's, I, it may be just more your screen. It's, you know, royal brown is kind of like a, almost like a muskety brown. It, it is very close to what is existing. Good to know. I didn't know if anybody else had that impression. Uh, the, I forgot what most manufacturers call uh, that earth tone brown that you uh, see on, on uh, windows. Some, some call it like a teratone or something like yeah. that, um, which is very similar to what, well, the, the color that's on the complex itself is a little bit of a lighter color than the, than the true, we'll call it the teratone on like the Anderson windows are, um, which is why is when we are actually brought over the samples to the association, that was the, the closest match, which, you know, they approved. Okay, so you had the opportunity to bring the samples over and compare them to what's there? Correct, and yeah, and we seek approval from the condo association as well, which they, they agreed it was a, a close map, the color that was there. All right, I feel uh, better knowing that if that effort uh, went uh, forward that uh, you're getting uh, a color that matches. Did, was it compared to any of the newer windows that have been installed there? Because I feel like we have seen Renewal by Anderson uh, installed there before and some other brands. So I didn't know if uh, they were compared at all to any of the new ones. I did not compare them to the newer ones, only the ones that were existing on the unit. Okay, thanks very much. Sorry to take you down that uh, diversion, but since we were looking at it, it seemed like the right time. Fatsik, you can go back to your issue, which I would have to agree. Um, it would be, uh, it's really only valuable to us uh, if there are uh, images that uh, show us the outside. Uh, since these are undivided windows, I suppose we have uh, a little less concern, but uh, is this is going to be uh, installed in such a way that there's a kind of a, a brick mold kind of installation um, um, or is there, there going be to be a, a channel small, around the window? Um, there's going to be a small amount of trim, but it, the, the windows and the doors are really, you know, to the opening size. There's not really much in the way of trim around existing windows we're going to be installing in kind. And will the trim reach the brick or is there going to be a shadow line. Now, of course, a darker color tends to be forgiving of that, but I'm just wondering how much of a gap are we dealing with uh, uh, in the insert? Or will this go right to the brick all the way around? It'll be pretty much right to the brick. I mean, it, there might be a small, you know, half inch piece of trim or something on it, but it's, it was ordered to, you know, go pretty much brick to brick. Thank you.
Any other questions from any of the other three commissioners with us tonight? Uh, hearing none, uh, we'll at this point uh, thank the, uh, the contractor for coming in to see us. Thank you, Corey. Uh, anyone from the public wishing to speak for or against this application? Hearing none, we'll move to application number 6052-21, Timothy Harding. This is the Marvin Elevate project uh, at 496 Main Street. Hey everyone, can you hear me okay? Yes. Great, nice to meet you all. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen quick to give you all some background. Uh, I'm the homeowner, by the way. Uh, Great, if you could identify yourself for the record. I'm sorry, uh, now that I realize this, I've been a little bit out of practice. I have forgotten to ask folks to uh, uh, articulate their uh, name and business address uh, for the record. Uh, we have a lot of that information, I think, for those who have spoken so far. So I hope I haven't troubled Linda, our reporter. But sir, if you could give your name uh, and uh, home address, that would be appreciated. Thanks. All right, just letting myself share real quick. Oh my goodness. Hold on. Sure. Did we just lose him? Yeah. Can I don't think he can hear us. No, I think he, he's gone. I think he got knocked out. Um, there he is. <laughs> Welcome back. And now unmute him. No, 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 no. Sorry about that. We had to change the privacy setting to share the screen. Um, okay. So here we are. So I want to start with a picture we have that we got with the house of where this house was years ago. We don't have the exact date of this, um, but it came with the house. Uh, and the key thing to note here is the absence of a side door that was here and a few additional windows that were on the back side. Um, and we flash forward to today, the home looks, <laughs> I added some jokes for you all. Uh, home looks somewhat like this and remnants of a two family time. There is a side door, which actually doesn't go anywhere. It's just buried in a wall. And uh, as you see is in a state of complete decay and two um, windows that had been somehow added over time, which are not congruent with the rest of a colonial design. And these are the ones that we'd be asking to remove. And then overall, it's worth noting that almost every window on the house is, is different. Um, had more or less just been one, one for one swapped over time to, to survive. And we bought this house in 2020, about a year ago. And anything that we're asking here for today is just to get this property under control, not really to, uh, to update anything. Really. So that's the, uh, the background. So I have a quick question. Yes. Uh, are you, for instance, if you look at the forward windows on this same side while you're here, is your um, uh, intention not to standardize the window size as part of this project? Um, no, the intention would not be to standardize the window size. We have four on the front half. Let me see if I can find a picture of the front. Uh, maybe don't have that. It's in the agenda. Oh, it's in the agenda, I guess. No, hold on. Where's the agenda? Oh, right here. Page 47. Page 47. Bear with me, y'all. All right. So, so yeah, the front four or the first floor windows, the front face of them, they are slightly larger than the, the second floor. Um, I other, other than that, we would be looking to standardize the remainder of the windows to a common size. 
All six over six? Yes. And the product that we are proposing is really a shot in the dark because um, we know it's a case by case basis for homes. And we had studied the previous minutes to see what had met the needs of the district before. And we also just snooped around the new museum <laughs> to see what the sticker was on there. And that's the only basis for our suggestion here um, for a full divided light. Um, well, I guess with the insert and um, six over six. So I think that commonly what's being proposed here is an SDL, even though it may be marketed as a, a full divided light. Am I correct, Vasek, about that? Probably, I, uh, let me dig through here. Yeah, so it would be called an SFDL, I believe, where it has the, the physical uh, grills on the inside and outside and a spacer within. So it is a continuous piece of glass, um, yeah. but it is not just purely a snap on with that void in between. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm sure you know what I mean. <laughs> but, yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, I and assume it has an aluminum color spacer bar. Yes. Oh, it can be any color, actually. Great. Have you thought about which color you'd like? We're going to propose ebony for the interior and exterior and the hardware. And also and we're noting for the spacer bar. Oh, and the spacer bar, yes. And also um, in the in the documentation here, it says replacement window, but I'll be would be proposing to install uh, a flange new construction window um, proper. And uh, is the house being recited as part of this project or not? No. So we would just get under this trim. A uh, handful of these trim pieces need attention. So we'll replace the ones that are still have structural integrity. Um, sure. But it'll allow us to use a flanged window and get that countersink that keeps with the flavor of the current installation. Great. Any uh, questions of any of the other commissioners in attendance? Yeah. Uh, there's... Actually, at some point, I'd like to come back to the windows, okay? Let's run through the rest of it, address the, the door um, and the uh, steps and stuff. Okay. And then, then I'd like to return to the windows when you're all done with that. Sure. So can I just walk you through? Sure. Item by item? Okay. So we started with the windows, of course. And so the next one would have been the the removal, outright removal of these three features of the X is on my graphic here. Um, with the logic being, again, pushing towards a congruent design with the rest of the house and also the neighborhood being next to all the other similar era of ones on the end of Main Street here. Um, and the basis for that is, I mean, they're hideous. <laughs> the, the door is a structural issue Right, it doesn't go anywhere. It only lets water into the house, and it's really damaging the house. Um, we are also entering here after about four or five years of neglect. I think some of you would be aware of how long this house sat before we got it. Um, and then again, back to this early photo of the home where those those features didn't exist. Don't mistake these for shutters and other windows. <laughs> uh, so is that? Is that clear? We can move on? I believe so. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Scrolling. There is it again. Um, okay, so we need to address this side door on the home um, because it is fully decayed. Um, I'm not really asking to expand the entryway or any way. I'm just going to swap in, a, proposing to swap in a new door, um, which would match the front door in style. So this, this paneling, and it would be the same size and everything that it is today. Uh, the storm door would be removed. 
Uh, right now, the storm door is the structure to the door. <laughs> and so we need to address this. <laughs> so what it looks like carry? it's six, uh, <laughs> it looks like it's six uh, panels, uh, flat panel from what I can see here. And um, what, what do you mean by a flat panel? It, I mean, it has texture. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, maybe there is a raised panel there. Um, it is. Uh, so it might not, maybe I can. Oh, it's, right. If you look close, it, I guess it may uh, be uh, that. <laughs> uh, you can kind of see there's some depth to here. And yeah, it, it is understand. Okay. That looks nice. Thanks. And uh, you're able to uh, replicate the measurements uh, in terms of the dimensions of these uh, panels. Have you found a, a supplier? We we would find one. Um, All right. The relatively standard size, and the trim would be unchanged. They would look the same uh, in terms of an entryway, just with a sure. repair door. Any questions of any other commissioners for this element? Hearing yeah. none, I'm oh, sorry. Not so fast. Mr. Harding. Yes. Um, one concern I have, and I don't, you know, you've been in here for a year. That's right. So you haven't lived with it that long. Uh, have you had a chance to look at some of the other coffin doors in the neighborhood? Yeah. And one thing you probably noticed in a number of the cases is they don't match the front door. Okay they tend oftentimes to be plainer. They tend to be more utilitarian simply because that was the coffin door or the side door <laughs> as opposed to the front door where you are trying to impress your neighbors. Um, so if so you have some direction on that, we'd be happy to. Um, it's more about getting a door that's not a potato chip that I fully understand and, <laughs> and fully sympathize. And so this was really just our offering. Um, no. But, you know, we might consider one that isn't as proud with like a different color. We might make it match the rest of the home. Yeah. Uh, or one that has yeah. less features. Oh, this can be. So, yeah, I can, I can send some stuff to Kim. She can send it to you. You can mull it over. Uh, cool. but also, in that chunk of on Main Street, there's a lot of houses that have those doors. Yeah. Just go look at them. Okay. Uh, it may, you know, they're probably not all original. They're probably have been replacements, either in kind or like your house was something completely different. Mm -hmm. But simply going and looking at those will probably give you some insight on what, how these things end up looking over time. Okay. Yeah. I, I just want to say, Batsik, I agree with you about that. On the other hand, I think that a house just two doors down um, on the right, um, the penders may have a matching door on the front and the side. Uh, if it doesn't, then that might uh, be a, a further argument for what you're suggesting. I think that these side doors, though, sometimes get enough use, although this is not the driveway side for them, uh, mm -hmm. where they uh, can become uh, relatively significant on their own and having the same style door isn't necessarily out of place. So I think they could go in either direction. Yeah, Doug, if I can add a few things. Sure. You know, uh, Damien here. So um, diagonally across the street from, from Tim and his wife, Hey. And um, I agree, um, Doug, with your point about uh, the Pender's door, but I also see where Vosik is coming from. What I've personally noticed is, you know, if we take my house from 1765 as an example, um, the front door, which is a replacement, uh, means likely that this, our coffin door is a replacement as well. They are both uh, paneled in the way in which we're looking at here with, with Tim's application. Um, so. Um, I, for one, would say it's probably better to do something of a match. We happen to have a storm door on there because given that it's original door, we have a little bit of what I laughed at Tim saying is the uh, potato chip effect. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> understood. So um, there's no reason why you couldn't have, uh, I think personally, a storm door um, that's appropriate. Um, but I like the idea that Vosik says, you know, walk around the neighborhood, you're free to come over and see ours and, uh, and take a look, go up and down uh, our, our neck of the woods here. Okay. Um, so if you commission prescribes one to us, we'll, we'll follow it. We just need to get something that's safe <laughs> in there. Understand. Okay. Uh, any other comments regarding that element? And thank you, um, uh, Damien, for chiming in. Um, then we can go to the next element. Right, getting them all out of here. Um, so what we're looking to do is, is um, add a length of fence that begins at the very rear of our home. Um, and the style that we want to do mimics the one of the street, the house across from us, 505. And you can kind of see it's the one that's on um, Hamner Road. Sure. And the reason is so we can contain our animals a little bit, let them go outside by themselves and possibly with the future of an in-ground pool way in the future. Um, <laughs> the, the location starts about 80 feet from the sidewalk. This is in the very back of our home. And it would be about 25 feet in length until it reaches the corner of the garage. Then um, the only way you can really see this if you're standing exactly where I took this photo at the Northwest angle of the home. So if you're looking at the house straight at it, you wouldn't see it um, only as you go past it towards the cold parking lot. Any other questions regarding this element, folks? Hearing none, uh, you could go to the next one. Um, I don't think this showed up in the summary, but out of necessity, the HVAC, given the proximity to the rest of our utilities um, in, the, in the basement, we would need to put compressors on the south face of the home. So that's um, between us and our neighbors in the narrow passage that exists between the two homes. Um, we would copy the way that theirs is concealed by just putting a couple bushes in front of it. Um, those take a minute to grow. So we probably leave this um, garbage can concealment for the time being or, or a potted plant or something. Uh, typically the, uh, what type of compressors are you planning to use um, mini split or conventional? So it would be a conventional, but we're eyeing a low profile one to kind of match this Mitsubishi mini split style. So it'd be pretty similar in dimensions, even though it won't be a mini split. Um, so, so it's going to be a top exhaust? Yes. yes. All right, that, that will be easier for you. Yeah. It did not appear in the um, legal notice because HDC um, has given administrative approval to you. So you don't have to worry about this section. Oh, great. Thank you very much. Uh, the only thing I'd mention about that is your distances. Sometimes it seems like uh, you see the zoning issue arise uh, depending on your space. So uh, that's something you can speak with building about, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay, right, um, yeah, so was number six it? I think we got oh. sorry, one more, <laughs> two more. Thank you. Um, the, main, the steps for our main entrance. Um, so we could see it's just, today it's on the left, it's just crumbling concrete. Um, it's kind of reached the end of its life. And what I wanna do is bring it in line with some of the other homes in the neighborhood where either it's a continuous slab with some bricks in the pathway or, um, or like a big rock like some people have. Um, that's really it um, rather than stick with this kind of crude thing from back in the day. Understand. Mm -hmm. Any questions, commissioners? Hearing none, we can go. Um, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, 
there's a lot of rocks and you're showing a brownstone there which is cool could be slate brick any idea uh, tim uh it'd probably be, what do you want yeah be a brownstone if um i can figure out how to get one <laughs> so the idea would be to copy our neighbors basically two steps oh. three steps uh it would still be two steps so you're not sure yet what kind of material so yes yeah, so basically not concrete either a stone or a brownstone okay Even thank like you that. thanks i think thanks. we can start from the premise of one and uh uh, or uh, two alternatives, and um, then they could always come back to us uh, to fine tune it if necessary. Uh, Chris? No, there's a lot of detail, right? I just hope that we could, if we are going to vote on it, that we have that info to, uh, to step oh, it yeah. in. Just... Thank you. Oh, yeah, sorry. So, no worries. It was more about the step and not their whole entryway, just two steps, nothing else. Thank you. Next element, please. All right. Um, so this is this final addition on the home in the very rear of it uh, is structurally unsound. And we need a building permit to address some of the repairs. And we read that it's a prerequisite to have this um, HTC approval for building permits in Weathersfield. Are you planning to replicate the existing uh, in the repair or are you planning to make changes? So the dimensions of the structure, the pitch of the roof and you know its footprint, we don't plan to change. And this area in the red box um, is not, or sorry, is the only part that's visible from the street. And then from any street. And then what we had um, requested is given the chance because we're redoing this whole thing sure toss a window on that face that you can see from the road um if the marvin elevate idea is approved um to just keep in line with the cadence of our house and kind of match the the style that the stamoses have next to us they have a they have a window on the side of their addition too um uh, i'm not terribly uh, attached to it but it figured the thing has no windows otherwise, so it's a chance to put one in there. It's a good time. Uh, any comments by commissioners regarding this element? So would you Hearing say, or, uh, I'm sorry, Vassar, go ahead. No, uh, I'm going to comment on uh, wonderful red boxes, but I can't see what the hell is going on in there. That's a tough one in the sunlight, but uh, basically, are you centering what no windows currently but that would be pretty yeah. much centered to that yeah that would be the intent but not level with the window to the right because that's a lower structure or would that be um actually it's a little deceiving it would be probably a similar height to that window because the angle of this photo it would just be up towards the the very termination of the roof kind of like this one up here where my cursor is floating around right with the trim work similar or to the first yeah one? the trim would match so which all the floor was that which floor would it match the first one or the smaller window uh, the first one so okay. the second floor yeah that's a, exactly what we're trying to do with that the first topic here with all the windows the the main features and all the ones on the front have four and a half inch trim surrounding the windows it's just a block trim we're going to try to make that consistent around the home uh yeah so this one up here the trim would be, I guess, slightly edited once we change the window. If we change the window. Any other questions? Okay. Hearing none. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. Classic does. Let, let's go back to the windows. Okay, so we'll go to the which top. we, you know, sort of talked about a little bit. Um, I'm gonna make a suggestion that you, you know, whether we approve something tonight or not is irrelevant to my suggestion. But my suggestion is basically, you've got lots of repairs going on. You've got lots of other stuff to do. I would sit on these windows till at least you get the structural stuff done. 
maybe the door's done and mull stuff over. Uh, it would be really nice to get your hands at the dealer to see where the flanges on these windows actually are located and how well, if you attach it to the existing sheathing, uh, how well that will fit in with what you have and in the same plane, uh, in the correct plane. Because it's, and especially on a house this close to the street, it's, it will make a huge difference. An inch is gonna make a huge difference in or out whether or not that window looks right or looks awkward. And yes. you've got a really cool house here. And you, you. you're sitting in an opportunity to do it well and make a real showpiece. And it looks like your heart is definitely in that. You, wanna, you want to do that from what I'm hearing you present. And I'm urging you to seriously and carefully consider exactly what goes in there so that it's something that you will be happy with for very many years, as opposed to regretting a decision. And it's a huge investment of money. So you're not gonna to wanna to do it over. And it would really stink to say, I screwed that one up. So yeah. that, that's it. that is my bit of advice. Vatsik, I have a question for you um, and, and for the homeowner, which is, is, is the work on that addition on the back happening anytime soon? Uh, it sounds like it needs to. If it does, you know, maybe that's where you put one of these windows in first and you see how that goes. And if it's successful, uh, maybe you extend that product to the rest of the building. If it doesn't, since it's black, it'll probably match uh, anything else you do. Vatsik, what do you think of something like that? Yeah. Yeah, so, so a few things. We, regarding where we are structurally, the, the aft part of the house, the very end of it, is something we plan to do more or less next year, the beginning of the year once the snow melts. Um, for where we are at this point in the restoration, we, we more, are, more or less are already at this juncture. We've addressed a lot of the structural issues for the house, and now it's a matter of getting it tight for the winter. And so this door, few of the other windows which let considerable water into the home um, drive us to wanting to ask for this now so we can make the move and do that. Regarding its countersink into the building, that's actually one of the main things we were focused on. And we wanted to match the more prominent windows of the home which have a bit of a countersink and even support those uh, fabricated storm windows so this product the flanged one especially would allow us to achieve that match and for the material of being able to attach the flange to um most of the windows we most of the walls are open on the inside of the home um they will be able to accommodate that flange so they're not just slapping in a replacement window that's going to bulge out and that's actually something that was my main concern. And I do think it would be, would be an improvement from this handful that are still on the screen here where I'm sharing that do bulge out um, and don't match. So that's my polite rebuttal to that. What um, size mutton width are you um, contemplating? Mutton width? The, the, the divider bar, um, how wide? Are these going to be closer to half inch or closer to an inch? So it'd be the, uh, seven per, what is it? Seven eighths. Seven eighths, my wife says. So Thank you to, very much. Yes. You <laughs> knew exactly what I was asking we, about. Yeah, we've been, we've been studying the heck out of these things because I know this isn't a light thing to do here. So. Uh, right now, do you, have you thought about the fact that 
uh, have you measured what you have? Yes. Do you have seven eighths? Uh, so they're closer to an inch. So, I, but again, no window matches here. So a typical Understand. one that you might find on the front of the home, which we're trying to align with is that, um, again, some don't have grills. Some, some have only a fake one snap on. It's a bizarre situation. Well, it's, you know, since you're not going to have painted um, onto the glass, um, you know, the wider mutton width is sometimes a, a better choice uh, because the narrow one is pretty narrow since there's no paint on the glass to make the smaller bar feel bigger. Uh, at the same time, we've tried this uh, using the wider size uh, in white and it wasn't successful where we um, did it, uh, where we, uh, or I should say where we permitted it. And um, I, I, but what you have going for you is that a black window is going to be more forgiving. Um, so I guess part of what uh, I wanted you to think about is what do you want to look out of from the inside, uh, if you're looking out of mostly five eighths right now or uh, something closer to a half inch, keeping in mind that this is gonna be thicker. On the other hand, with six over six, you already have fewer light divisions than a lot of windows. So you probably could go with the thicker. Um, I guess one of my questions would be, what story are you trying to tell from the outside of the house in terms of the you know, are six over six windows really ever seven eighths? Uh, or were they, uh, uh, did they come at a time when they were almost all narrower? So that I ask that not just of you, but of the other commissioners. So it's something to consider. Yeah. Because Vasek, I think you're getting at, uh, what the homeowner saying is he's farther along than, than you are. And if so, then I think we need to have the substantive discussion about every element of the window. And I'm sorry to interrupt, Chris, go ahead. So um, we'll, we'll take whatever direction you give us here. Um, I think the, the goal would be to match as close as possible, as you're saying, the story from the outside. Um, whatever we see from the inside is a result of that right so thank you for letting us know how about commissioners any input not at this point okay how about uh any of the others good okay uh thank you very much then uh, i appreciate uh all of the presentation, uh, you know, clearly in just a year, you've uh, gotten to know your house very well and Thank sharing you. that uh, story with us is uh, really appreciated. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, ask Thank at this you. point, and that applies to uh, both homeowners. So uh, I'll also say uh, at this point, is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application? And hearing none, I thank the homeowners for coming in and uh, oh, opening their uh, minds and hearts uh, and sharing all that with us. And uh, we look forward to deliberating more during the public meeting. And I'll ask if we can move on to application number 60, 53-21, uh, Aaron and Nathan Walpole, the project at 11 Middletown Avenue. And if you could identify yourselves for the record, if I uh, keep neglecting that, uh, that would be appreciated along with your home address if you're the homeowner and business address if you're a contractor. Good evening. Any Good evening. Great. My name is Nate Walpole. The home address is 11 Middletown Avenue. I'm joined tonight by David Grant from the Georgie Roofing and Siding. Contractor who's gonna be doing the work on the house. And the reason we're Welcome. here is we have uh, 24 vinyl windows in the home that we'd like to replace. We're starting to have some water leakage issues with them. I remember I was to see you guys only back a couple years ago for the siding, the trim, and the deck. I didn't hope to be back this soon, but here we are again. 
Thank you. And uh, the gentleman from DiGiorgi, if you could just give your business address and name, please. Yes, my name is David Grant, and our business address is 33 Lancaster Drive in Beacon Falls. And uh, do you have a shop here in Weathersfield also? We used on the Silas Dean, but we don't anymore. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Mm -hmm. At this point, uh, is there, uh, do you have documents you want to show us, or do you want us to look at what's already been submitted? There's a pamphlet that was submitted, and if you want to let me share my screen, I have some photos. Uh, that would be great, if Kim could allow that. You should be all set. I'm Thank to get you. Are you able to see the pictures of the windows? Not yet. So far, we're still seeing you, although Vasek now. I apologize, I'm not as uh, tech savvy as I'd like to be. No problem. Allow system to share. It's just going through some safety mech steps for you. Yeah, it's a lot of, I'm not really sure what's going on here, but uh, maybe we could try a screen, a Google street map view, please. If that's possible, I don't think this is gonna. One second. Thank you, Kim. So it's nothing crazy. I mean, it's just basically we're having some issues with the vinyl windows in the hall. And we'd like to switch to the Infinity by Marvin fiberglass uh, product. Uh, material wise, it'll be a change from vinyl to fiberglass and aesthetic wise, um, everything will look exactly the same. So it'll be the, the six grid over nothing. And um, so it's basically every double long window in the house. This is an older photo before we redid the, the siding. And is the existing here uh simulated divided light with a spacer bar uh, or is it grilled between the glass? It's grilled between the glass. We're looking just to replace what we have. The uh, house up the street has grills between the glass. The house to my north has nothing. The people across the street don't have anything. So there's really nothing consistent in the neighborhood to match to, but we're just happy to uh, you know, make it look like what is there now. So unfortunately, the grills between the glass probably do the least successful job of replicating um, um, a look of a of of the of a true window. Um, and since you're in the process of the replacement, is your heart set on not uh, considering the applied uh, grill of the SDL, which would still give you the um, other features of the window uh, as is? I kind of like the windows that I have in terms of ease for cleaning and maintenance. I don't really care to, you know, have to clean six individual panels every time. I think it's a home run going to what I have already. Okay, any other commissioners uh, have questions regarding this uh, project? Looking at the front of the building, the house the six over ones look great with the exception of the two small windows flanking the front window. And my guess is that wasn't the way it was built originally when there were wood windows. There were probably four paint, four individual panes there instead of six. And which would give you glass sizes that are more in line with the rest of the windows in the house. And is that something that uh, can be accomplished? I'm not sure what you're asking me to do. So looking at the front of the house, first yep. floor, you've got three windows there. Okay. Two are narrow, one yep. is wide. Okay. In that same space, six panes of six quote unquote panes of glass are stuffed into that same hole. 
the windows on the side look very skinny and tall. Okay. The window in the middle, because it looks like so many others looks, for lack of a better term, right. If those two side windows, instead of being six pane on top, were four pane on top. Okay, I know I understand, yes. Either pane of glass would be more of the right size and probably would look more appropriate. Okay, I'm not, a, not opposed to that stipulation. And actually I'm amused by the fact that these windows lasted 15 years. I'm not sure how old they are. We've been here for 13 years and- We, uh, we looked it up. Okay. I'm mean, amused they last 15 also. But it's definitely time. We've done, you know, I'm, I'm so sad to say that this will probably be my last meeting before the Historic District Commission. We've done every other thing to the outside of this house and we're still getting water on the living room ceiling. So this is the last, hopefully the last hurrah here. But I'm just, not that it has anything to do with directly as far as we're concerned with the application, but if the water's coming in the living room ceiling. On in, senor. Sorry. Is, what is leaking? It's got to be the, a bad install. The window corners are just, it's the vinyl is, the vinyl is past its time. So we've, the, the photos you're looking at are dated. So everything else no, no, on no, the exterior of the home is no. Yeah. What, what, what happens is when you put a vinyl window in, you have to give it a amount of space on each side to breathe because of yes. its high expansion and contraction rate. And in that space there, you have to put fiberglass insulation you know, in order not to, to, to have any sort of leakage coming in the house uh, in regards to air infiltration. Well, after a period of time, that window expanding and contracting in that opening, um, that fiberglass insulation ceases to expand and contracts and stays matted. And now if you have a wind-driven rain, uh, there is obviously the possibility of leakage in because of that. And that's just a, a factor of time. So we'll be back in 15 years, huh? Hopefully. No, 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 because because the Infinity by Marvel window is all fiberglass and it has no significant expansion and contraction whatsoever. It only moves 1 32nd of an inch at 160 degrees above and 30 degrees below zero, which we don't get those extremes. So okay. there's no measurable expansion contraction and we measure tighter and there is no pushing back and forth against that insulation. And we have installed this window in the historic district for the last 10 oh, yeah. years. Oh yeah. So we'll be. So we'll see you in 50 years. You won't see me. <laughs> <laughs> Doug? Unless the commission has any other questions, there's a, a, a pamphlet was included. I'm sorry, I can't get the. Oh, that's the, okay. We, we've got it. Share to work, but. Um, you know, I think this gives yeah. a good general overview. No, I think you did did a good job presenting what you have. Uh, Commissioner Obian seems to be muted for some reason. Yeah, hey, let me jump Sorry, in and ask it. We, we always ask this, uh, he's back Doug, but for the record, uh, what are we going with for uh, screens? Uh, I have you, screens Chris. now, but to be honest with you, I put them in three times, once every three years when the air conditioner breaks, I put the screens in the windows to run the fan for a couple of days. But for the most part, I like the unobstructed view with no screens. So, so, so this insulation will not include screens? Well, I'll probably purchase them. They come with them and whether you want. Yeah, so just for the record is all we're asking. Are they full, half screens? Uh, we'll probably, whatever you require. So. No, no, we don't require anything. What are, what are you going to do? What are you buying? <laughs> Typically, we put full screens in. Okay. And, and what color, what do you guys use for your, they usually come in three to colors for the yeah, it's, it's fiberglass. The standard color that everyone else has out there for screens. Well, well, you know what you have, you got black, you got silver, aluminum, you got gray. Again, just for the record, so Kim can. It's, it's like a light gray, light, light, light black. I mean, I, I got one right here. I can pick it up and show it to you. I think that what Chris is getting at, sir, is that uh, typically, when uh, someone presents a white window, I uh, typically share that I think that silver or aluminum tends to um, do a better job 
uh, than maybe a black screen does, uh, which might be a good choice for a dark colored window. So uh, I think that's uh, maybe what Chris is getting at. We still tend to ask you folks what your preference is. Uh, and uh, just as we asked about half screen and whole, I mean, I'm influenced by the fact that the homeowner says he's not going to uh, put the screens in at all, really, um, to maybe uh, allow the full, uh, but typically a full screen on a white window. Uh, uh, in, in this case, it would help disguise the GBG, uh, which I'm not so crazy about, but it also doesn't uh, fully show the great advantages of the Marvin window. So. Typically, uh, if we weren't considering the homeowner's representation here, we would stipulate a half screen with a light colored screen. And that's sure. typically what we would do, but we always ask what the homeowner would like. And that's uh, what uh, Chris was getting at. We, we can go with the half screen at high transparency so you barely see it. Yeah. Like I said, unless the air conditioner is broken, you probably won't see the screens in the house anymore. Yeah, I like that answer too, but you can never say never. So thank you guys. No problem. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, any other questions of any other commissioners? Uh, and the light divisions uh, here, just one last question for the contractor. Uh, are these five eights, I assume, or are, are you talking about a wider spacer bar even in the GBG? Well, the GBG can either be uh, 23, 30 seconds or, or one inch GBG, whichever is required by you guys. Okay. Uh, do you know what's there now in terms of the uh, distance? Yeah. Does it look more it like a like half maybe half inch GBGs right now? Yeah, I think that's my guess. Yeah, in any like of GBGs. And you mentioned 22, 33 or something like that, which is. Yeah. But just over half, which is seems appropriate for that. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions of any other commissioners? Hearing none, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us this evening. We really appreciate both the homeowner and the contractor being here. And uh, I'll ask if there are any members of the public that wish to speak for or against this application. And hearing none, we'll move uh, to the next application on the agenda, okay. which is... Yes. It's Kim. Yes. Kim. Um, I just want to go back to that if I can in on the 2006 application for the windows that were approved. There's a stipulation that says the windows shall be six over one aluminum clad wood windows with muttons applied to the exterior glass. Oh, so the uh, previous the uh, person was out of compliance with the previous order. Yeah, we bought the house in 2008, so I can't uh, speak I'm just to telling you what the stipulation before. is. Sure. I uh, understand. It's, uh, it's important information for us to be aware of, sir. Uh, we're not in uh, any uh, position uh, judging your um, responsibility for that in any sure. way. But the uh, previous activity in the building is uh, something that we do need to be aware of. And I appreciate that being communicated to us during the uh, public meeting portion. Uh, I assume from the reaction that I got, uh, I mean, is that something that both the homeowner and the um, contractor are just being made aware of now, or were you made aware of that earlier? It's the first time I'm hearing of it. Okay. Uh, I think that the reason I asked that question is I didn't know if the previous uh, action on our part, um, meeting the commission, uh, that knowing that the commission had uh, wanted simulated divided light windows on that house to begin with would make you feel uh, any differently about uh, what you're requesting at this time. Uh, I appreciate the viewpoint and opinions of the commission, but I'd like to stick with what I really like what I have in my house in terms of the maintenance and I like the way that it looks. So I'd like to stick okay. with what I have. Thank you very much. Just wanted to give you that opportunity. Thank All you. right, at this point, uh, and just to be clear, this window is available as an SDL, is it not, Mr. Contractor? Yes, it is. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, I'll go back, uh, unless there's a further question from any commissioner, I'll ask if the public wishes to speak now that we have that additional information. And hearing none, 
We'll move to uh, application number 6054-21, the uh, Amanda Comesso, I hope I said that correctly, the project at Six Railroad Place. Is there someone here uh, to present that this evening? Yes, hello, my name is Matt Bober and I'm the contractor that will be doing the fence installation at Six Railroad Place. My business and, is on Tree Road in Cromwell, Connecticut. And I didn't step on your line. Did you get that, Linda? If so, uh, that's great. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening. Is there anything you wanted to show us now or do you want us to refer to the documents we already have? The documents that you guys already have. Okay, and I believe that would be uh, one of the deeper pages. 119. Thank you, Batsik. We can all scroll. Is there anything that you want to let us know based on what we're looking at now? Uh, yeah, so I didn't include the, any pictures of the current fence that is up, but basically there's a golfing style stockade fence six foot currently up at the property that is falling apart. Uh, there's missing panels, there's posts that are tipping over. Um, the installation that was done previously was done poorly. There's no gravel, no concrete in the uh, and the four by four posts there. So basically we're just trying to redo the fence in the same exact footprint around the property, um, just install it properly and uh, make it low maintenance for the customer. And in this project, the good side would be out and the rails inside? Correct. Correct. Thank you. Any questions of any commissioners regarding this application? Good presentation. Agreed. I thank you very much for both coming in this evening, or I mean, for coming in this evening, sorry. No, no and, problem. Uh, uh, I'll ask if there's anyone uh, at this point, if there's anything more you wish to add? Hearing uh, none. Okay, hearing none, then I'll ask if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application. And hearing none, I thank you folks for, uh, thank you for joining us tonight, sir. And I'll move at this point to the last application on my agenda, at least, which is number 60, 55-21, David Cote or David Cote uh, seeking uh, an amendment uh, to change the side of the, of the uh, fencing that is in application number 60, 42-21. Thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, David, if you're with us, could you please Give me the pronunciation of your last name and then give your home or business address depending on your circumstances. Yes, how is everyone tonight? My name is David Cote, C-O-T-E, and it's gonna be 8 Wilcox Street, Weathersfield, Connecticut. That's great, thanks for joining us tonight. No problem, thank you for having me. Sure, uh, is there anything that you'd like to uh, introduce uh, and do you want us to rely on the docu uh, documents we already have? Uh, I believe they will suffice. I do have a few, I believe they are the same pictures that I can share on the screen, but I believe you have the pictures um, that I in the packet. provided in the packet for the initial Great. application. All right, uh, why don't we scroll then since we, so, much, so many of us were there already, if that's all right with everyone. Yeah, and I believe this is, is this the application where there's a, a rail change being requested because of the swimming code? Swimming uh, code? Yeah, that, that's part of it. Um, so yes, it was, it's, a, it's a safety issue as well. Right now, my neighbor to the west, um, he currently has a pool. Ooh, some nice old pictures there. Um, he currently has a pool, an above ground pool with no gate um, to the stairs walking to his pool. Um, that's one of the reasons why we are putting in the fence to begin with. So I feel like I'm owning some of his obligation in providing a fence. Um, another reason is just because we like some privacy. Um, some other, additionally, we're seeking uh, where was I? I'm sorry. I, ha I have some things written on the paper here. I lose my train of thought sometimes. Not a problem. Take your time and basically, just let us know what you'd like us to know. Basically, we'd like to maintain it. We'd like to maintain a clean, cohesive look. 
um, for our property in the neighborhood, one that aligns with the historic district skylines and standards. Uh, the fence is on, completely on my property and we have completely paid for it. It is a beautiful cedar fence and it presents very well on both sides. Um, having the unfinished side face uh, their property will have no negative look uh, or impact of their property. And in turn, we touched on it briefly. It will actually be more of a safety benefit because it will limit the ability for someone to climb um, over the fence from my side to theirs. And so uh, from your backyard, you'll be seeing the uh, good side of the fence. And uh, I hesitate to use the good side, but yes, the good side, because it is, it's such a beautiful fence. At one point I was trying to decide on what side of the fence that we like best, but it's very custom, very beautiful cedar fence. I, I will agree that it's, uh, that language may be too pejorative for the circumstances. Uh, so you can call it the rail side of the fence. Um, but the circumstances are such that typically the rail side would be facing a, a person's backyard. But what you're saying is that the uh, fence between the two properties would better serve the neighbor uh, and the purposes of safety by having rails out. Uh, and if you're going to do that, along the back, uh, there's uh, uh, only makes sense to match. Uh, was notice provided to the neighbors regarding this application? Uh, if I could ask the uh, coordinator to just confirm that. I'm assuming so Sorry, since she's- trying to unmute and it was not unmuted. No problem. Um, the everybody was noted um, in the original application. I did speak with the neighbor the other day on the phone and they are aware of the situation. I also spoke with the zoning enforcement officer about the codes that are um, in place for fences and um, the rails on the fences. In some towns, it is against code to have the rail facing um, the neighbors because of the safety issues. Um, in Weathersfield, we just have a suggested good side facing out. It is not required. So those are the things that um, I learned this week. And the neighbor is aware. And um, the homeowner, we've I've spoken with the homeowner too about these things. All right. So I think that the conclusion of that is that uh, the, since they have an above ground pool, I don't know that they have to have a fence around it at all. Is that correct? Uh, I mean, I in this particular location, is it visible from the street? Um, I wanna say it's visible from the street. They don't have a, a front gate as well. Initially, I was under the impression that if you had a pool that you would have to completely fence the yard in. But after doing some due diligence, I realized that the above ground pool only needs to be at certain height requirements. Um, but I did note that there's supposed to be a gate to the pool entrance, which my neighbors uh, do not have or provide. And I will also note that the two neighbors to the north of me, who both additionally have pools in the yard, um, were both more than happy to take the quote unquote rail side or bad side of the fence. Um, and they are very pleased with the look and appearance thus far. I've run that whole length. Um, already. And that's why I would like to keep a cohesive look surrounding my yard to not have two different looks um, of the fence, which would be visible from the street. Understand. I just want to be clear, though, once this fence is installed be between your property and the one next door, that still won't secure the other uh, pool from what uh, I think we're taking away from this. Um, yeah, not completely. I'm doing my best to provide a safe environment and uh, understand not much I could do so, okay. or speak bad on anybody. It's been kind of a bumpy road in the past. Understand. Doug, uh, can this... I interrupt for two seconds? Sure. Um, the neighbor, when the neighbor got the appro their approval for their 
above ground pool, it was with a stipulation that the fence, that there would be a fence. I thought so. Okay. Um, it does, is there a, is, is the property adequately fenced or is there not a fence at, uh, or is the fence not fully installed on the other side? Hey, Doug? Yeah? That I think is an enforcement issue that we don't have to deal with tonight? Well, only because if the enforcement is, um, well, I guess you're right, because if it's going to be enforced, then the rails in will uh, perhaps uh, facilitate that. Okay, uh, thank you. Also, for, Doug, you're, and, and to, not to belabor it, but you're talking sure. about two different issues. The fencing is to shield it from public view. Right. But uh, the uh, applicants talking about here is a safety factor. Either it's a ladder that removes the stairs, they remove the ladder nightly, because if that pool wall is 48 inches high, that's the code too. So there are two different issues, but. Correct, understand. Thank you very much for all those contributions. Is there anything else that you'd like us to know, uh, applicant and neighbor? Um, no, I, I do appreciate your time tonight. I would like to conclude in letting you know I take pride in my yard and living in old Weathersfield. And we're, I grew up here, but this is my fiance, Stephanie. And uh, we look forward to continue to work with the historic district moving forward to help maintain a, the beautiful look of our old Victorian. Thank you for being a part of our community. Any other questions of any other commissioners? Hearing none, thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, our uh, both neighbors, old and new, and uh, I'll ask if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application. Hearing none, uh, thank you for joining us. I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing and open the public meeting on the aforementioned items. Make a motion. Second it. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the public hearing is concluded and the public meeting begins. Let's start with application number 6034-21, Cynthia Brown. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to prove with the following stipulation that the window panel does not include the horizontal board or horizontal mutton, I should say. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Kathleen. Any argument? Sure. Yeah, I, I, I think that would make it look less, lack of a better word, busy. Uh, I, I was in favor of even her first uh, approval. I, I think it's an appropriate garage door on a side view uh, home of that era. Thank you, Chris. Um, my only, uh, uh, as I said earlier, um, I think that what we've learned is that the overlay doors uh, execute better. Um, I think that uh, what was suggested today is kind of a compromise to try to get the best looking um, ins insert door that you can have. And it'll be interesting to see uh, how this one comes out. I think that it will tell the tale of whether or not uh, we uh, can respond to future applications by pointing to a substantially better and widely available product, uh, or if this one, in fact, uh, is a compromise that works. So uh, I uh, ask at this point, are there any other comments of any other commissioners? So Doug? Yes. You're aware about the price differences between this door and an overlay door? Um, I understand that there is a price difference. It's but they seem there seem to be plenty of overlay doors in the district right now, leading one to believe that that's not a um, bar to their deployment. Price one. Well, that's why I say uh, yep. I'd be interested in seeing what this looks like. Um, I'm not um, immune to. Uh, um, um, monetary issues, uh, but at the same time, we see them everywhere. And frankly, when you look at the price of a, of a building, 
uh, the price of one door is a relatively minuscule portion of the overall value of the building. So I think that is something to be considered as well. Uh, anyone else wishing to make remark at this time? Hearing none, uh, we'll call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 And I'll join aye as well. Give me just a second, please. Sorry about that. Just need one moment. While you're taking a moment, who's voting? Everybody. Everybody, thank you. It's yes. Us. Thank you very much. So uh, proceeding on to the next, uh, that, uh, or I should say the motion carries and the application is approved with the, can, uh, with the stipulations noted by Mr. Lyons. Uh, application number, uh, and we wish uh, Ms. Brownwell on her installation. Application number 6046-21, Joseph Uricchioli, uh, the project on uh, Center Street as uh, modified tonight by Her uh, Excellency, our uh, Historic District Coordinator. Is there a motion? Make a motion to, sub to approve as submitted this evening. I second. Any discussion needed? Um, I don't think so. It's been well discussed over two meetings. So all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved as submitted tonight. Thank you. Application number 6049-21, Paul Lasella, the project at 32 Hartford Avenue. Is there a motion? Make a motion to approve with the stipulation that the wood trim shall be five quarter by five and a half to run the entire front width of the building immediately above the existing trim on the doors and windows. That's stipulation number one. Stipulation number two is the gutters shall be K style on the front of the barn. I'll second that. Discussion. I uh, just wanted to say that I uh, appreciated everybody talking about the pavilion uh, while we could. Uh, I appreciated uh, Kathleen's um, consideration of, of some of what I uh, mentioned. Uh, I myself uh, like uh, a lot of what I see uh, when I mentioned uh, Texas and Colorado. Uh, and I think there's a place for some of those elements in Old Weathersfield as well. Uh, this will be another example for us uh, as to whether or not this uh, installation uh, is a successful one uh, when mixed with other elements. So um, I you would- specifically said Waco. Yes. <laughs> Texas, Waco. I, I, I would- there's A lot of diverse areas in Texas, yep. I would travel to Waco <laughs> just to see Magnolia. There you yeah. go. There you go. <laughs> I don't want to endorse a product. Um, <laughs> so that's why it was a little more general. Uh, Waco you're being talking a about little Baylor. bit too specific. <laughs> no. All right. Baylor, not so bad, but we're not talking uh, football right now. No. All right. <laughs> All right. In any Let's case, um, <laughs> I have a brother-in-law to answer to. So uh, there you go. That's right. not to mention my fellow commissioner, Clemson. So Let's uh, uh, ask if there are any other comments that other commissioners wish to make. Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and uh, the application uh, is approved uh, with the stipulations noted. Uh, we wish uh, Mr. Lasella well and appreciated his uh, presentation tonight as we did all of our uh, applicants. Going to the next application, Mark and Mary Raymond, this is application number 6051. I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. I'll second. Kathy's got it. You're fast, Matthew. 
Kathy, are you the second? I'll second. All right, somebody's gonna have to take over while Doug Doug dropped. All right, uh, I guess the reason um, okay. it's basically the same, other wood to steel, uh, the panel pattern uh, seems similar um, and it's appropriate for the, especially for the distance from the, from State Street. Can we vote? Does da Damien's muted, does he know he's voting? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Good deal. Yeah, I just I, I was just muting. Sorry about that, folks. So my uh, dad was calling for the second time today to try to wish me a happy birthday, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I've been on the phone both times. Sorry about that. Uh, in any case, uh, we miss? were on Mark and Mary Raymond, and did we get a uh, um, a motion? I made the motion, and uh, Kathy seconded. Thank and you. So we'll call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 I'll vote aye as well. Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved as submitted. Uh, this will give us an opportunity to see if this product uh, should uh, be embraced uh, or uh, unfortunately uh, its compromises uh, outweigh uh, its uh, successes. So let's see uh, what we get. It's far enough back that I think it's worth the risk in this application. We wish the application, uh, the applicant well in the effort. Uh, going farther to the next application, if I could have one moment, I lost my agenda in the process. Sorry about that. I think, uh, give me just oh. one second. Karen Lane which would be application 6051-21. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Vasek. Um, is there a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. I'll second. Any uh, discussion? Yeah, basically what they came in with is a uh, clad window that's gonna pretty much replicate the existing aluminum. Uh, the visibility from any public way is going to be pretty much minimal and will make very little impact on the district. Uh, the, one thing I was the one thing I was really disappointed in the applicant or more precisely the, uh, contractor. the contractor that he was unable to provide us with a, any sort of picture of the exterior of his product that he was actually proposing to put in. He showed us all kinds of pictures of inside, shows all kinds of pictures of double hungs, but you know, a slider he just couldn't come up with. Well, I do think that uh, the point was made and uh, that uh, in the future, we're going to have two advantages here, which is that the um, window, uh, we're going to see if that color is actually the right one for it. And I'm sure that if he brings it back to us, he'll be able to tell us that this is a successful installation and he'll also have cut sheets that give us the exterior. Thank you, Vasek, for saying so though. Uh, are there any other commissioners that wish to comment on this? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved as submitted. Going to the next item on the agenda during this public meeting, application number 6052-21, the Marvin uh, Ebony Project and other associated um, installations and repairs at 496 Main Street. Is there a motion? You know, Kim asked us really not to table anything. Huh? Um, so I won't. Um, so well, if you wanted to make a motion to table, Vasek, I would uh, second it for you to argue it if that's what you like to do. Since there's no, it's so easy to make the motion to begin with. 
Fine. So made. Okay. Second it. So you made part of that argument earlier. What would the rest be? So Having basically, heard think, what they had to say. Yeah. Overall, I think it's a well thought out project. Uh, they're putting in a great fence. They're going to replace a very inappropriate coffin door with the right one. They're going to patch things on the north side of the house that's going to bring it back to original, which is all wonderful. Uh, what I'm less than thrilled with, or way less than thrilled with, is a simulated divided light window on a house of this age, this close to the street. I mean, the house is, I mean, you could almost touch the thing walking on the sidewalk. Uh, and I think this house truly deserves the right window as in to replace these windows with what with something that looks like it was built originally. Uh, a wood window of the right width. Uh, yeah. Would you consider uh, a would you consider a wood simulated divided light window? No. Because at least it would be painted and uh, behave in at least many respects like the any, wood any perimeter. Any, wood, simu wood. any simulated divi divided light window is going to use opening and closing mechanisms that are modern. And while I fully understand that that makes for a tighter window, uh, it also introduces all kinds of elements and especially at the distance that that house is from the street and introduces all kinds of elements that scream 20, 21st century. And this is not a 21st century house. This is not a reproduction of a 21st century house. This is not a 21st century reproduction of an 18th century house. It's an 18th century house. What and about, it, I'm sorry. Uh, what about the fact that storm windows are not going to reveal that channel either though. I'm sorry. Storm windows on existing, uh, uh, storm windows on an all wood window are going to hide the channel that you say is going to be revealed as a modern carrying mechanism. Maybe. I guess that uh, I, I have a lot of sympathy for people in this position having lived with this for more than 20 years, almost 25. Um, as, and this is why I've gone down the route three times. Uh, pardon me? I've gone down the same route three times now. Right. And, uh, and you know, I, I think part of it is that, I mean, when I see really good wood simulated divided light windows, I think to myself, that's a fairly good facsimile of the real thing. Um, especially because I get to see it and it's not hidden by a storm. So to me, especially when you consider that people climate control all year, and so condensation will be an issue at the extreme seasons, not just in winter, but in summer. Uh, and that if you uh, wanna be able to open your window that a storm window uh, which is needed in the summer will not be as usable. There are a lot of reasons that I think that exploring the best possible wood simulated divided light window is a good thing. And so part of the reason I'm engaging in this discussion is that I can understand your argument um, about uh, uh, the argument you're making, Vasek, but if you rule out SDL completely, I think then you miss an opportunity for an attractive SDL uh, if, if one right. exists. You're hundred percent right, Doug. <laughs> Is there uh, more that you'd like to say about that before I ask the other commissioners? Nope, I've said my okay. bit. Thank you. Any other commissioners like to be heard regarding the windows here? We've been down this road many times before um, 
and especially important on a house of this, what is our process to approve any portion of what we're presented with tonight? I think that we can um, stipulate approvals where we have them and, and uh, delay action on other things where we want to. So if, if we want to embrace uh, Mr. Miglis's idea of uh, giving more time to that aspect, even though the homeowner may have settled on a window, if we want them to explore something different, I mean, one of the things that I suggested was allowing them to do the installation in the back. I mean, it's pretty clear they want to do the installation this season. Um, no, yeah, they've laid out a pretty detailed plan to time frame and probably economic yeah, and, and allocation they, of funding. So there's a lot could, here that we could do. Uh, maybe still a question on the coffin door, but the rear fence, the steps. Um, I mean, I'm not the windows. Uh, looking to make them. I'm not looking to make them wait until next year to do windows. But no, I understand. I'm no, well, let's let's. Uh, I'm agreeing with the windows, so let's get off of that for a second. Okay. Can can we jump to? So and a lot of these other items, there's eight, there were eight action yeah. items on this. Um, now it's only a two week delay. All right, so I'll this. withdraw the, the no, 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 we'll draw. We'll, add yeah, well, yeah. we'll add stipulations to the motion to table then. I, I mean, I think it's cleaner to say that there's a motion to approve for all the things that we want to approve than to turn this motion to table into something very different from that. And there's a good chunk of that south side, or uh, yeah, south facade where the siding is removed. Um, sure. For repairs, so, so. Uh, Vatsik, is it all right with you if I withdraw my second and yes. allow you to put forward a new motion? Or, or allow somebody else to make a motion. All right. Um, certainly. Uh, uh, first of all, I'll withdraw my second, and you're going to withdraw your yep. motion. Uh, and I'll entertain a motion to approve those elements that we agreed on tonight um, and table the windows for at least one meeting. You can't split a, an application and table part and approve part. I uh, guess that was All my right, question then we can, the gate, so we're then done. We can, then we can <laughs> deny the window portion without prejudice to a reapplication. Correct. Is that all right, Kim? If that's what you want to do, if you need to table it, then table it. Um, I'd rather table it then for the two weeks and not have a denial. And and they, if the window question uh, isn't resolved by then, that can be withdrawn uh, or what have you. So I, I'd be in favor of the original motion. For so uh, all right, then I'll call a vote on that since well, there seems to be. Uh, if you want to renew it, Patsik? Sure. <laughs> All right, I'll renew the second. Uh, we've had some argument here. Uh, if all voting could indicate uh, aye or nay to the motion to table versus uh, any the other alternative that I indicated. So all those in favor of the motion to table say aye. 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 Any uh, opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries, and we look forward to seeing this couple in two weeks. Uh, application number uh, 6053-21, Aaron and Nathan Walpole, seeking to replace the vinyl windows at 11 Middletown Avenue. Is there a motion? Uh, I'll make a motion for the purposes of discussion to um, uh, deny based on the previous um, motion, uh, part of, based on the previous approval for this property. And if I could have a second, then I'd be interested in hearing arguments against this. Sure, second. Thanks, Vasek. Okay, so we have a situation where previous commissioners approved something that was not put in and we have an opportunity to revisit the circumstance and 
the question is, do we have a responsibility based on our previous ruling to uphold that now? And I would say that we, we would, unless we think the uh, unauthorized installation actually was an improvement. And I think that if that's what, uh, if that's something that somebody wants to argue, then they could. Or do you want to say that uh, once the house changed hands that we lost the obligation to fulfill the previous uh, approval? So there you go. Comments, please. This sounds like a question for a lawyer, Doug. <laughs> it's not really a lawyer's question because it's not a property law issue. At least not now it isn't. But I do think what we have is, you know, in we have the we have the ability to look at a result and say that although that wasn't what we asked for, it actually is a better result. And uh, we're not going to make somebody put in a result that's uh, not as successful. In this situation, I think that's what you'd have to be able to argue to approve this. As much as I sympathize with the homeowner's desire to be able to have the ease and the homeowner's desire to improve the windows that he has uh, and, and being uh, cognizant of all the other improvements that have been made there. Um, but grills between the glass uh, are, you know, th that house is about as close to the street as, uh, as a house can get. And it's not as old as the house on Main Street, but it's certainly visible. So uh, I'm, like I said, I'm, I have created an opportunity for everybody to argue uh, in any direction uh, that's helpful to the homeowner here uh, or to the contrary. Uh, this is the time to speak or not. Thanks. As he indicated, you know, he's coming to help be the last time and he has done a very good job on, on every application he's come forward with and results have, you know, have, have worked out very well. Um, you know, to hold, you make a valid point that, you know, we asked for SDLs back in 06 and he moved in with the GBLs in there. So, uh, you know, it is, looks, it's kind of definitely changed the look of the house more in modern style than probably the twenties it was built in. But um, I have no issue. I mean, his case was easier to clean instead of six panels. Uh, he's going to get the same benefit of no leaking, a tighter fit. He's going to get the thermal pane glass that may last longer than 15 years, hopefully. So go to SDLs, the contractor said they came in them. Um, just because they're easier to clean, it doesn't seem like a valid reason, but you're right, what does it look, how does it look today? Um, I'd be in favor of maybe stipping SDLs as opposed to denying the application. Yeah, I agree with Chris. I, I, I think it needs, um, at first I was shocked that they, the vinyl windows only lasted 15 years. I just thought it proves a lot of what Bosick has <laughs> telling us you know, um, we should make a sign or something and um, t-shirts, I swear t-shirts. <laughs> but um, so that was interesting to me. Um, and, but, and so it was also interesting that he wanted to replace it with another vinyl window. It sort of was like, huh. Um, uh, so I understand Doug, the, the thought that we should actually go back and rethink this a little bit more, but I do believe that the divided light is a necessity. You could just, it's so close to the street, you could see it. They look um, modern and they look, you know, fake. So, Anyone else? Thank yeah. you, Kathleen. So Kathleen, what, what's going in there is actually not a plastic, it's not a vinyl window, but a fiberglass window. So it's a different synthetic so, that's more stable. It is but more stable. Um, okay, so it didn't say that. It's replacing existing vinyl with all Marvin Infinity. Okay, it just didn't say what it was yeah, going Yeah, Marvin on. Infinity happened to be part of a glass. Or, okay. Uh, and that, that's the same window, I think, as the Marvin Elevate. Is that correct, everyone? And I, I believe that. I meant to ask that. Oh, the, yeah, they, they didn't mention that, but I thought that was the case. I believe it's been rena renamed. Yeah, I thought so as well. 
although that has a wood interior, the Elevate. This didn't say wood interior. But that's not our business. But no doubt. But we're just questioning what the product is. Um, I think it'll look a lot like uh, the uh, project on Robinswood, if anyone has gone by to see tray hands, mm -hmm. if you're wondering. And I do think that that would be a plus for that building. Except that Robinswood is simulated divided light. Correct. I'm saying if you want to know what it looks like oh, as yeah. SDL. OK. Um, um, so go ahead, Basik. Yeah. Uh, as, the, as the application stands now, not the motion, but the application. As the application stands now, I would vote against it. Uh, we, in a chain, in going from a plastic, a vinyl window to some other material, uh, we as a commission are handed an opportunity to try to bring this house closer to what it was when it was built. It's got vinyl siding. For, for a more appropriate <laughs> look. Exterior. Uh, and if we approve the grills between the glass, then we have not gone down that route. We have simply replicated in a slightly different material, a window that is not appropriate for that building. And it turns out that the reason the window is not appropriate for that building is because they didn't put in what they were supposed to put in 15 years ago. So regardless, I would vote against this application, regardless of what, whether or not uh, they put in the right window 15 years ago or not. So basically I'm saying if they were approved for grills between the past 15 years ago, there's no reason why they should be approved for it today. Anyone else? All right, um, I can uh, withdraw my motion if uh, someone wants to make a motion uh, that modifies the uh, application, or I should say the, um, the action here. So I'm gonna withdraw my motion to uh, deny. Okay. Uh, if someone will withdraw the second. Sure, whoever made it. Okay. I think it was me. All right, and uh, the at this point, I'd entertain a motion to approve yeah. with a stipulation. I make a motion to approve with two stipulations. The first stipulation is that the grills shall be simulated divided light. The second stipulation is that the two small windows on the front of the house, the upper sashes, shall be four light instead of six light as it is today. I'll, I'll second. second that. Or Damien. Yeah. <laughs> So noted, we had a, a lot of discussion already. Um, it's just very, very hard to uh, reconcile GBGs with the district. Uh, and, uh, you know, otherwise it really, there's almost no distinction between the fact that the house is in the district and not uh, since they um, don't replicate uh, the look of the window that was ever there and except for uh, during a period of non-conformance. Uh, I would uh, ask everyone to vote at this point. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the vote is unanimous and the application is approved with two stipulations. Thank you, folks. Application number 6054-21, Amanda Camesso seeking to replace a six, uh, the, the wood stockade project at Six Railroad Place. Um, we ha uh, had great documentation on this. Uh, is there a motion? Make a motion to approve as submitted. Is there a second? I I'll second. Say. Okay, thank you. You get the second, Kathleen. Uh, discussion, uh, again, a well um, presented plan uh, that will have uh, a, a, a execution that's uh, quite consistent with what we see in uh, and, the best projects in the district. And I think 
on the tail of the last application, this is a like-for-like -like, uh, substitution of a fence that is actually appropriate for the district. Good point. Um, it was the evidently the original installation that was the problem and will hopefully be uh, better cared for this with this installation. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved as submitted. Finally, application number 60, 55-21, David Cody, uh, seeking an amendment to the application on his fence project at Wilcox Street. Is there a motion? Chris? I'll make a motion. I'll okay, I'll go, ahead. go ahead. I was just gonna say, I'll make a motion to approve as submitted for the purposes of discussion. Second. All right, uh, discussion. Uh, it's um, a difficult situation in part because the part of the fence is already in. Um, the, we don't have abutters who are complaining though, who in fact support the installation. Uh, when we do these installations that are a little bit different than others, uh, it does get a little bit hard to follow. Uh, but there are places, uh, including, uh, um, there are places all over where sometimes a little nonconformance makes more sense than uh, a bright line rule. And perhaps that's why in Wethersfield it's uh, advisory, so to speak. So uh, in this particular location, are folks satisfied that the uh, reverse uh, situation of the fencing uh, is uh, worth approving here. Any comments from commissioners? No, I think so. And this, the style of this fencing, I'm surprised there are some horizontal rails with the slats. Um, it's a unique situation. It's a one of a kind. Um, you, know, you don't want people climbing up over those on his side of the fence uh, into a pool area from an insurance standpoint, as well as, as code. So I have no problem with this. Thank Again, you, Chris. Unique, Any, unique application. Everyone is different, it's true. Thank you. Any other comments? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved as submitted. I uh, thank everyone for uh, the fact that we have just a couple more items. Approval of minutes from May 25th. Do we have the necessary folks here, Kim? Uh, Linda? I'm here. I think so. Doug's here. Were you here, Kathleen? Yes, I was here. Okay. Okay. Uh, then I'll just add our uh, thanks for our, uh, uh, well, first a motion to approve. I'll make a motion. Thank you. I'll second it. Or sorry, I'll give the second to Kathleen, I think. And I will uh, just add my discussion, which is that this is a great opportunity, especially after a long meeting, to thank our reporter, Linda, and our commission, our, our historic district coordinator, Kim, for all of their service to the townspeople and to all of us in our efforts to serve them. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the minutes are approved. Public comments on general matters of the historic district. Has anyone registered, Kim? None. Is there uh, any report from the historic district coordinator? I do have a quick one for today. Sure. Um, I was asked, uh, remind, asked to remind you about um, getting bios in um, for that. And are you going to that Peter Gillespie introduced. Oh, for the certified uh, historic uh, district? Yeah. And Kim? Okay. Yes. You were gonna share some bios that we can use as models? Oh, I sent one to Kathleen. Did I not send it to you too? Sorry. No. I don't think I got it either. I would love one. You did yours. I already have yours. yours. Oh. <laughs> I don't want mine to sound substantially different from everybody else's. <laughs> um, I will send it out to thank everybody you. and then you can all <laughs> write them if you would like. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Kim. 
All right. Uh, and so, uh, can I just ask there... a question about that? Sure. Are we going to have a discussion about that at all or how that is going to impact um, the Historic District Commission? Uh, in terms of if we're certified? Yeah. We could certainly do that in the next meeting yeah. I think by noticing it. I think we should take some time to talk about it. Maybe I, do, you want, do you want me to have Peter come back and talk more about it? And is there any information, Kim, that they can send us? Um, I know that they did have a representative here and I, I just don't think I was cognizant or aware of exactly what all that meant. And, and, and I'm still looking for it all, but um, what, what's that going to mean for us? What that, that's going to mean for funding for the town? Where's the funding going to go so forth and so on? I sent along the original information. I will dig that out and resend that as well. Appreciate it. I that sounds great. That may answer most of the questions. It's and if I think, not, I think the negative tax is it going to handcuff us in any way, shape, or form? Um, right. I mean, we, we know that the grants of monies are available, but what, what does it prohibit us from doing? Right. Actually, nothing. But then, I that, think that's what we just, need, and that's good. I, I that's, think it's just upside. If you, if you okay. want to be clear yourselves, just simply search Connecticut Certified Local Government and you'll get a whole bunch of hits that will explain it very nicely. Okay. Okay, thank, thank you. And as far as you, you peruse it and you don't see anything, Basic, is what you're saying. No, it's thank you. It, it's it's a win-win and gets money from the state. Okay. Or makes it and easier. And it increases the uh, I mean it's like when you have a certified police force, I think that it helps build recognition from outsiders as well sure. that sure. hopefully yeah. doing things correctly. Puts you in a different pool. I understand that part. There We're you just go. Yeah. But actually, I, I've been teaching long enough to know that any money the government gives you, they're going to decide where it goes and what's to do with it and the regulations that go along with it and the qualifications that you need to meet before you get it. I understand. Keep it. So I was just those little, you got to dig a little deeper, I think. I'll, I'll, I'll go for it. Understand. And, I, you know, I'm not necessarily, uh, for me, it's really more of a uh, less the money and uh, more uh uh, a procedural uh, and practice uh, tool that hopefully keeps us in best practices and in, in our work so that we do the right things. Yeah, but um, the program didn't come up overnight. It's been out there and why hadn't we, I guess, kind of raised the red flag too, but if that's... I think it's been around for a while. I think that it's been brought to us a couple of times and we've just never fully okay. gotten around to it. Okay. I think All right. Nothing sorry, go ahead. Yeah. is that if somebody's giving you money, are you going to be tied to voting a certain way? And I think that's her concern. Understand that piece of it. Uh, and certainly I'm willing to be schooled if there's a downside there. But um, like I said, I think that um, we can always decide not to take the money for certain things, but still have the benefit of the best practices that hopefully come along with the certification. So there you go. Uh, that's just my two cents. Uh, is there any correspondence? None today. Thank you so much, Kim. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn, folks. Before we do that, uh, I'll make a motion to make sure you call your dad after this meeting. Oh, absolutely. Happy I'll birthday. <laughs> <laughs> but make a motion to... Uh, I'm grateful to do so. I don't even know what we do here. To end the meeting. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, is there a second? And yeah, we got the second from Kathleen. So all those in favor say aye. 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 The meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much, folks, for your uh, patience. I have been in a unconditioned hot office for a while. <laughs> Happy to uh, move on. Great job, Doug. Thank you. Thank guys. you so much. I appreciate all of your patience with me. Take care. Good night.